Okay, hey guys, it's Colonel Coffee here. Uh, I'm here with Chris, one of our Hello. regulars. Chris, I don't think has yet seen the new stream, but I have, and I'm basically going to furthermore explain all the details of the new DLC that's coming to Destiny. Uh, I'm going to reveal as much as I can for you guys that haven't seen it yet, and I will link the Twitch stream down below so that you guys can go watch the whole thing for yourself as well. So. I'm going to jump straight into it. Uh, let me just open up Twitch itself. Basically, this isn't a DLC. They're, they're calling it an event. So it's going to be free for everyone, I believe. Uh, obviously, if it is free for everyone, some people that haven't got the season pass and stuff like that, maybe they'll only be able to compete, complete certain parts of the book. So this event is called Age of Triumph and it's basically a new book and it's the biggest book that they've got yet. It's got 13 pages, um, three pages of which are dedicated to each class, Hunter of the Titan, the Warlock. So uh, make sure you've got one of each character out there. There's another page dedicated to the Crucible only, there's a page dedicated to Trials of Osiris, there's a page dedicated to raids, there's a page dedicated to collections. This one's going to probably take me the longest. It, it requires collecting every ship, every uh, ghost, every fragment, every everything, like all the collectibles it requires, like collecting not necessarily every one of them, but the, the amount that sets. So that'll be a, a good one to get. Um, so the main thing that they're doing is they are bringing back all of the raids. So obviously year one, we had the infamous Vault of, Gra Vault of Grass, as Aaron said earlier. <laughs> uh, Vault of Glass. Um, and they've brought all the raids up to 400 light, which means it'll be a little bit tougher. But they've also changed because They've done a lot of patches, especially the likes of Crota, which you can solo and glitch it out to the end. Stay. Uh, so they've got that stuff. They've focused on a They haven't changed anything at all the raids extreme to the core they always were uh, they've just basically the the little thing just so that you can't cheese it to make it a little bit tougher and for vault of glass Gla crota they've also added in challenge modes um chris yeah did you did you do vault of glass and crota did you play them yeah yeah i did uh Never did them on hard though, unfortunately. Right. Never got any of the, you know, the exotics or full sets of armor. See, I've, I always finished like the like armor sets. Like I got all the armor from every raid, but I missed out on maybe three weapons. Um, Vault of Glass. And never got the freaking yeah. Fate Bringer, so I'm excited to get that. Um, I never got the uh, Praetorian's Foil, which was the fusion rifle, I think, from Vault of Glass. There's one in Crota that I never got either, but I can't remember what it was called. See, I never got any of them. I, I always wanted to get the Vex Mythic Last as well. I never got that. And if they are going to bring that back at Light 400, oh, I'll yeah. be honest with you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not touching Crucible ever again then. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, it, it was patched for Crucible, though. I'm not sure how it's going to work at 400 Light, but basically, when the Vex Mythic Last was out in the hard raid or whatever, uh, me and Aaron had stopped playing Destiny altogether. And then we came back because my brother and Overkill wanted to do a flawless raid. And we basically did yeah. it on like our second or third try on Vault of Glass. A flawless raider, six man team Vault of Glass. Like one of, probably one of my proudest moments on Destiny. And uh, I got my Vic Smith Glass from there, but I got it after they patched it. And people had already stopped, stopped using it because they did like a major patch on it. Uh, so I'm not sure how it's going to work in the new one. But just to be clear on that, for those that are watching, they are bringing absolutely everything up to light level. So the raids are going to come in at 390 as they are now. So like if I go to uh, Wrath of the Machine, you'll see that it's... That's that's a strike. That's not Wrath of the Machine. Let me try that. <laughs> yeah, so you'll see that normal... Is, I know, right? Um, <laughs> no, normal Wrath of the Machine is 370, hard is 380. Whereas the new ones... Well, or, well, the old ones, um, Ball Glass, Crota, and, of course, this bad boy. 
King's Fall. They're all going to be 390. Um, but the way that it's going to work is that they're all going to be kept in their original state and it's just going to add an extra tab. So you can do the easy version at 290 on King's Fall, you can do the hard at 310, or you can do the 390 version. So you can do them all, but obviously the 390 version will get you new rewards and stuff. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, all the weapons are being brought up to par. They're all if, if you're 400 light when you get a weapon drop, it's going to be 400 light. Nothing will drop lower than what your light level is. So if you're under 400, then yeah, you might get a variation, but most people will be 400 by the time this is out. It's coming out soon. I should, uh, I'll get to that in a bit later, but... Uh, yeah, so as far as I know, they're not changing anything. They're keeping everything similar. And at the end of the stream, um, you will see that they there's a, a raid group, there's like a raid team, a fire team right now going through the new revamped Vault of Glass. And they showed us just the one part, which was the the confluxes. And it didn't seem too bad, but they, like, they were all well equipped and stuff. So I'm sure like the, the gorgons and the jumping puzzle and the boss fight will be pretty difficult. Um, and I know Vault of Glass and Crota are both getting their own challenge modes. I believe there's going to be two per raid. So there's two in Wrath of the Machine 2, but there's three in King's Fall. So basically what I'm up to here is... If you can see in the bottom left hand corner of your screen, you've got your daily missions, you've got your daily crucible and stuff. They're adding a new one, which is going to be weekly weekly raids. So every single week, there's going to be a new raid available. And it will the way the weekly raid works is you will get like your normal beneficial gear from all that. You get your ornaments. So basically, you know all the ornaments with the new raid and stuff? How you can get... Yeah, yeah, like the uh, all the skin customizations where you got yeah. raided. Yeah, and like on your armor, you get like the glowing stuff. Basically, they're doing that for yeah, yeah, all yeah. the gear sets from all the raids. And to get oh. the ornaments, you have to only get them from the weekly raids. So when it comes to the weekly raids, that's the one you're going to be focusing on. But you can do all of them whenever. Uh, also, with a weekly raid, normally when you're doing a raid, typically there's only going to be one challenge mode available. And then the week after, the challenge will be di different. Like it will be different each week. So that's one thing I'm not sure about, because all the raids are on par, I'm not sure if all the challenges from each one's going to be different, like, every week. But for the weekly, like, the official weekly raid, you're going to have to do every challenge mode within that raid in, like, during the course of that one raid. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And also, on that, Chris, what I never told you is, the guys that developed it outstated that the Atheon challenge is the hardest challenge they've ever had. So, uh... Oh, no. That's going to be... No. That's going to be exciting. <laughs> I was hoping you weren't going to say something about Atheon. Yeah. I mean, Atheon. it's so easy, but if there's going to be a challenge... God, I could only... I, I could only imagine what damage it is. I can only imagine the challenge for Vault of Glass, like the second one, is for the, the, like the Templar boss just after the Confluxes. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure what that will be. Atheon, I'm not really sure what the challenge will be for that either, but if they say it's going to be really tough, then I'm interested to, to see what they're going to get from it. Crota, and, um, are there any other bosses? I can't remember Crota, it's a long time. Like, you've got the you've got the final boss, you've got Crota, there's going to be time for sure. Then you've got what? You've got the bridge, you've got the chandeliers, you've got, yeah. It must be the bridge part, they must have a challenge for that. Unless they just do one challenge for a quote, I'm not sure. King's Fall, there's three mm. challenges. And this is what I'm, like, I want to question them. Yeah, they've got Golgoroth, they've got the War Priest, and they've got Oryx himself. So when it comes to yeah. King's Fall and the weekly raid, are we going to have to do all three of them? But, I mean, by this point, we're all on par with them. Uh, yeah, I mean, honest. you know, the, the King's Fall raids, I mean, the challenges for that, they're fun. I, I love doing them. Yeah. And I love doing challenge for any of them, you know, Obviously, them and this new one, Graphic Machine, the challenge just is so much more fun. Well, the, in, in King's Fall, like, the war challenge was that only one person could take the the relic thing, the shield, once. Like, it had to rotate each time. And we yeah. basically, like, we got round to that. Because of our high DPS, we wouldn't really need to change it more often. So, again, with that in mind, if you look at King's Fall, it's only like 380 light. So they are going to bring that up to 390, I think. So it'll be a little bit difficult, but it's not going to really change that much. Um, yeah. Golgoroth, 
anytime you do a King's Fall strike, people usually do it the challenge mode anyway. Or I've, I've found that because it is quite easy and it's it, you do a lot of damage that way. Same for Oryx. Everyone does Oryx challenge mode because it's the easiest and most efficient way of killing him. So I think for King's Fall we'll all be set. Uh, but the others I'm really excited to get back into. Like I've been wanting to go through raids loads of times but I don't want oh, to just like go through on a high level, get four guys and you know work our way through or go for Crota and just cheat our way through because it's not it's not right and I hate it. So it's going to be nice having a full fire team of six having to work together and get through all the old raids again. And the one thing yeah, we do an old raid. Yeah, I like it. For the likes of you uh or maybe um who else has been playing with us recently? The people that we've been trying to help and like they only started in King's Fall. Like the King the King's Fall was like the first package that came out to get the whole game. Yeah. So nobody really had the initial experience of the first two raids. Um, which brings us back to the book, to be honest. Uh, so Age of Triumph, I'm going to emphasize the raids that much because they're bringing all of them back and stuff, but it is a book. So if you go into like the Rise of Iron book, it's got five pages, okay? And it's got, you know, story missions, it's got raid parts, it's got um, crucible parts. And the same for the likes of the Moments of Triumph, is um, the year two one, which I haven't really done much of, and uh, and then of course the uh, the one that you did a lot on, Chris, didn't you? The Sparrow one. Uh, no, surprisingly, I didn't. Yeah. At that point, my internet, my internet had a massive issue, so I only got to rank four. Right, I'm mean, rank two. Yeah, the best one I've done is the uh, Rise of Iron book. I've got yeah. two things left to do on it, which is uh, the Thorn Bounty and. Dragon of Light, which is Iron Banner. Well, Sparrow Racing has three pages, Moments of Triumph has two, and Rise of Iron has five. The new one has 13 pages. So let me basically... <sighs> I'll, I'll try and go over as best I can what the pages are. The first page is Commemoration. That's what it's called. And it's basically everything that you would have done in the like year one. So, for example complete a certain mission, like a story mission, uh, like the Black Garden or something like that. If you've completed that, you will get the medal in that page and stuff like that. So, also on a lot of the pages, there's basically eight challenges per page. If you get the seven challenges, then you'll unlock the eighth one. The eighth one is basically like, you've done everything on this page, so here's another badge. Uh, so yeah, the first page is just like story missions and year one stuff, which most people have done. Um, and then of course second page or whatever we have like story page oh sorry hang on I think I got that wrong so the first yeah the first page is uh, like your year one I guess commemoration page <laughs> uh, I'm trying to read it I wonder what Okay, so I don't the, know what the rewards would be. All right, well, the first in the first page, Chris, right? The very first tab, the mission, the challenge is complete an activity between Destiny release and the Dark Below. So it's basically, <clears throat> excuse me. There's eight challenges that prove that you were here from day one because they will have that record, which is pretty cool. So if you yeah. weren't here from day one, you, I'm not sure if you can earn that at all. Or if you can go back and have to redo the stuff to earn them. The second page is a story page where it's like Black Garden and certain missions and stuff that you have to complete, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, the third page, I believe, is the Titan page. So like I said at the, the start of the video, there's a page dedicated to each class, which are pretty straightforward. Like uh, there's, a, there's like the Titan, for example, like get 20 melee kills, get so many super kills, and then... Obviously, you have to do the Crucible quests from each one as well. So, like, there's one tab dedicated to all yeah. three subclass quests. That's for all three characters. So, that'll take a long time if you haven't already done them. Um, and I should just note as well that they only showed off the first four uh, quests from a page. So, like, there's eight things on a page. They only showed the four on the left. They never showed us stuff on the right. 
So a lot of the stuff is still hidden because they want us to experience it on release. Uh, there's a Crucible page. I didn't really go into that too much, but it's pretty straightforward. It's just do your certain Crucible stuff. There's, of course, there's a Trial of, of Osiris page, which is the last page, and that's just, uh, yeah. you know, like, make it to the lighthouse. But they did say that that is retroactive, so if you've previously been to the right lighthouse, then you can unlock it right then. So lucky for me, I got carried through once. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, here we go, here yeah. we go. <laughs> I, so hopefully I can get that one. Um, there's there's a there's a, a medal called... Oh, was it Wrecking Ball or something like that? Apparently it's like a really, really hard one to get. Not many people have it on Trials of Osiris, so I'm not really sure what that one is. I'll have to look that up. Uh, but they did it quite smart in Trials. Like, um, a lot of it's like, get so many revives, get so many kills with special weapons. So they're fairly easy. And for a page with eight challenges, and the last challenge is you've completed all seven of the above, it actually says you've completed all six of the above. That way, if you've never been to the lighthouse, then you can still complete that page. So they've they've been quite smart with it and not too mean, as they were saying in the stream. Um, then, of course, there's a page dedicated to raids. So this one's quite interesting. I was just saying to Chris before, um, the challenge that I've seen on the stream is eliminate all gorgons in the 390 light vault of glass. So if you don't, if you're unfamiliar with that part of the raid, you know you drop down after the Templar and you've got this little maze. And if you're doing this on hard mode, there's more Gorgons. Some of them are stationary, some of them are moving, but there's loads of them. I'm not sure how many there is altogether. Maybe ten or something. And they take a lot of damage to kill. And if you kill one and don't kill it quick enough, it's going to scream and alert the others, and it's game over. So you have to kill it quickly, and you have to do it really without any of the others seeing you do it. So that's going to be a challenge. Like that one's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I noticed there's I mean, also. I guess you could do that with Tether and Galahans. Yeah, like you're super. But the Galahans, Galahans make too much noise. Well, that's what that's what I mean. If you're going to do it, you're going to have to kill them away from the rest, I suppose. Mm. Um, and, uh, but... Just to uh, just to let you know that wrecking ball thing, it's a shotgun uh, challenge. What is it? I think I'm looking at it now, you know, I typed in, you know, uh, Trials of Osiris Wrecking Ball and it comes up with uh, Trials of Osiris Wrecking Ball Shotgun, Wrecking Ball Montage, Wrecking Ball Trials of Osiris, Wrecking Ball Montage 3, so it's a shotgun type of thing, I'm guessing. Just doesn't say much other than that, but yeah, so I'm guessing mm. it's that shotgun uh, challenge where you get sh shotgun kills successively, re uh, repeatedly or rapidly in a certain amount of time. Right. They got a certain window. Fair enough. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the one that they said. Either way, um, it's doable. Uh, yeah, so we've got a page dedicated to the raids. Um, then we've got the collections page. Now, this one is going to be insane. There's, it's, it's basically for those who want to go out and do everything. So there's... A challenge to collect all the ghosts. Uh, there's a challenge to collect all the SIVA fragments and stuff like that. There's a challenge to get yourself 5,000 Grimoire score. Um, there's a, uh, to get every ship in the game, every shader in the game. Um, basic, well, I say every, they've got a mark on it. So, for example, it'll say get 75 ships, but there is more ships than that. So, if there's one ship that you really can't get, that you just have to keep focusing on the vendors and buying the, the new ones every time it refreshes because that works too. So that one's going to be fun. Well, you know, when you say you, when you say you can't get a certain ship, do you mean like, you know, uh, the way you can't get the, uh, what is it, you know, uh, the Wrath of the Machine. Machine raid ship? Yeah, you I've mean only, that one? I've only <laughs> raided like three times ever since that came out, to be fair. Yeah, um, fair enough. So that one, we need to hopefully get I'll get it. It's a really good ship, so I really want to hope I can get it um, but yeah so that's the book the book is loaded with stuff and the rewards are basically all emblems apart from the last one so you've got uh, levels or rank 1 to 6 and you get th uh, 6 emblems or 5 emblems sorry and then when you hit rank 7 it gives you like this this crate thing and when you go inside the crate uh, they've done this before 
you basically get this, uh, I don't know if it's like a code or something, and you go to the Bungie website and you get money knocked off of a t-shirt or something like that. Um, so yeah, apparently, yeah, they've done this before. And the emblem for Age of Triumph, have you seen it, Chris? You know, it's like a, it's like four, sh three shields. Yeah, yeah. All right, so basically... It looks, the, uh, it looks pretty badass. So one of the shields within the three represents all four raids. One of them represents something else, and you know, so it's, it re represents everything inside Destiny, and that's what's on the T-shirt. So it's pretty cool, and you, that you can get money off that just from doing this. And they also stated that you don't have to complete the whole book to hit level seven. So you will probably have to do a majority. So if there's loads of stuff that you can't get or you can't be bothered doing, um, you'll still be able to hit that rank seven with ease. But it will take a long time. Um, I was looking at the emblem now, and I, there's, there's definitely going to be a calling card for that, isn't there? I mean, I, I'd love that. I would. I'd love that. Yeah. Well, that's this like this uh, this DLC thing is very emblem friendly. Like you get an emblem for everything. Every time, like what I was saying about the, <laughs> the certain pages, where if you complete seven of the challenges, the eighth challenge is just to complete the first seven. If you do that, then you'll get an emblem. Or, you know, so you, you, there's loads of emblems given out. And the way they're doing it is, like, for me me especially, I love raiding. I'm good at raids, but I'm terrible at PvP. So I can walk around with a badge that says I've done everything in the raids column and show that off, whereas other people might not be so good at raids and they can show off their PvP badge. So it makes you kind of stand out on what you're better at. They've done a good job with that. Uh... And they've also done a lot of patches and stuff. They've um, they've fixed a bunch of stuff, but they're going to release patch notes beforehand. But with the patch notes, they've actually been really tricky. They've only told us some things because you know how people investigate patch notes on everything. Every time there's a patch, it's like, oh, this has been done, this has been done, let's exploit it. Um, they haven't revealed all of their bug fitch fixes and stuff like that. They're going to keep that and let us figure out for ourselves, which is pretty cool. But yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah. The one thing that, you know, obviously, as I'm, I'm going to repeat it, is, you know, the, the raid weapons, you know, uh, what was it you were saying to me about uh, element weapons again? Right, like so... If, uh, what was it? Was that the Vault of Glass? Yes. So in, in Vault of Glass, yeah, yeah. year one, you would get elemental weapons. You'd get, like, a fire scout rifle. The, that was one of my favorite weapons of all time. Then of course the fate Never bringer, the most probably the most overpowered pistol or slash weapon in the game was arc burn. Um, hit a crit person, they'd explode. Like it's like a really insane weapon back in the day. And ever since like a certain point, they took elemental weapons out of the game. So the only primary to have an element is the Zalo Supercell. Zalo Supercell. Yeah. Which is awesome. So I don't know if they're bringing that back or not. I'd love them to bring it back just for the sake that the game's finished. Like. There's like you know what I mean like if we if we beat the raids and stuff we're gonna have to do it with the weapons that we've got. Um, yeah. So I'd love them to bring back the elemental weapons because there's nothing we could really use them in. I don't know if they'll really Other take that much of an effect. Falls, I guess. And... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe, I'd, I'd love them to do that. Uh, you know, Be beneficial. I mean, if you look at some of the strikes they've got for us now, like the nightfall strike, it's I think it's one way you got to go defeat. Um, a super shank under in Rasputin's bunker. Yeah. Another one that if you destroy it, it goes from fire to arc to, uh, to fire to fire to arc. That one. You know yeah. what I mean, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where if you get the, uh, is it? I think it's the uh, taken version of that. It's next to impossible. It is but there's difficult. always a void burn or something like that on it. If you got one of those elemental weapons for that, it'd be so much easier. I, mean, I guess it's a bit of a cheat. It takes the fun out of it, but it's just what? one of those. It's one if, of those you, if you go back to year one when possible. nightfalls were brand new, for example, like and I say this story all the time, I was one of the first people, at least within our friend group, that got an icebreaker, right? And that was fire. I know it's not a primary yeah, weapon, but were. it was fire. And when it came to like a solar burn, teammates would die. And you know, back then there was no checkpoint. You'd get sent back to orbit. You'd have to do the whole thing over mm -hmm. again. So you know, I'd be on my own and I'd be taken out enemies. And I'd been a nightfall for like an hour and a half or something like that. So when it came to doing the raids and getting those primary weapons, they really helped out a lot. But it didn't make it easier. Yeah. I mean, if they've brought all the 
everything up to the cap. I don't see why they can't just bring the elements back. Unless they like take effect in PvP, which I don't think they do, but um, I don't know. Either way, I wouldn't mind. But there is a video out there where if you break down the trailer and you compare the old Fatebringer to the new one, you'll notice that the little arc iron sights aren't on the new one. So I don't know if that's a hint yeah. or if it was just like a lighting glitch or what. Uh, but anyway... Unless... Unless... You've got a different element to it. Maybe, maybe just you know, the, what they're going to do is a f every single element and then a very standard version, just a complete yeah. collection. That that would be cool. If they have like one of each time that you get a random roll, or they'd have like the that fusion rifle. The oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it, the one where you can actually change what element you want. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, that, like, that's the one a cool you get from uh, all three eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um. On on the DLC, well, it's not really DLC. Again, it's an update. I think it's free for everyone. And the news about it is that it's basically coming in 20 days' time. It's out on the 28th of March this year, this month, right now. Uh, so it's just a couple of weeks away. So if you want and you're not yet satisfied with your progress so far, you've got a couple of weeks to do a bunch of this stuff that you've seen and you've heard from us on this challenge and on the book so far. For example some of the uh the story missions or if you weren't a year one player you can go back and do the year one stuff um and, st and collect all your ghosts and your fragments so you can do all that now they are retroactive which means if you've completed them before when the book comes out you can just activate them get them out of the way straight away so you've got a couple of weeks to catch up on that front um but and then the other half of the book you will have to start again which keeps it good that way nobody can complete it in like the first couple of days So yeah, but yeah, that's pretty much it for Age of Triumph, as the guy in the stream kept calling it Triumphs, and uh, the developer guy was going mental. <laughs> He's like, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll know what I mean when you watch the stream. Uh, but yeah, Gosh. so thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks, Chris, for joining me, and I hope oh, you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think of the upcoming DLC, and we'll see you in the next video.